Today is November 23rd. It's the 328th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. Robert Johnson didn't invent the blues, but the songs he writes and records come to define blues music ever after, influencing not only untold number of blues musicians, but also pretty much every musician to come along since. Robert Johnson's recording career is exceptionally brief, five days in all, and it begins on this day in 1936 when he makes his first recordings in room 414 at the Gunter Hotel in San Antonio, Texas. Robert Johnson is born in May of 1911. At least that's the best guesstimate based on official documents from the time. No one knows for sure exactly when he's born. He's born of an extramarital affair in Hazelhurst, Mississippi. He grows up dirt poor in various parts of Mississippi and Arkansas. He picks up the harmonica and plays the blues at a young age on the harp. But before long, he switches over to guitar, learning the basics from his older brother. In 1929, he marries 16-year-old Virginia Travis. The following year, Virginia and their infant child die in childbirth. Virginia's family blames Robert for her death, what with him selling his soul to the devil singing all those secular songs of his. If that's the case, then Johnson decides he's going to dedicate himself to music. And in a matter of a year or so, he masters his instrument, telling people he learned to play guitar from the devil himself. The devil's story will evolve over the next few decades into a full-blown legend of Robert Johnson selling his soul to the devil at the crossroads in exchange for virtuosity as a blues guitarist. There are a few different variations of the legend and a few different crossroads that are the crossroads. Wherever the crossroad really is, Johnson sets out from there in 1932 to play juke joints all across the South. Living life on the road, Memphis, St. Louis, and even up north, Chicago and New York. While on the road, he crosses paths with a talent scout for the American Record Corporation who's looking for new voices for one of their labels. Johnson is interested and heads down to San Antonio to meet up with producer Don Law. Don Law sets up a makeshift recording studio in the Gunter Hotel, room 414 setting up the soundboard and recorder in the bedroom and the microphone in the parlor. Robert Johnson is one of a dozen performers that Don Law records in November 1936. Other acts such as Al Dexter singing Honky Tonk Blues and the country gospel group Chuck Wagon Gang, everyone's favorite. Robert Johnson enters room 414 for his first recording session on this day in 1936. He faces into one of the corners of the room when he records. Legend has it that he does this because he's shy, but the truth is it makes for a better sounding recording. It's a technique called corner loading. The reflections off the corner walls make for a fuller sound and lend a little natural echo to the recording. Johnson records eight songs on this day, including Terraplane Blues, I Believe I'll Dust My Broom, and Sweet Home Chicago. Most are completed in one or two takes, and after recording on this day, Johnson goes out for the night and gets into some kind of trouble and lands himself in jail. Don Law helps him get out, and two more sessions are recorded in room 414 in the days that come. Johnson laying down Crossroad Blues and 3220 Blues, among others, making for 16 songs recorded at the Gunter Hotel altogether. After the successful release of Terraplane Blues, Johnson is invited to make another round of recordings, this time in Dallas. He records 13 more songs there, including Traveling Riverside Blues and Me and the Devil Blues. And then that's it. Robert Johnson continues playing town to town and then dies in 1938 under mysterious circumstances, possibly poisoned by the jealous husband of a woman Johnson flirts with at one of his shows. Robert Johnson records 29 songs over five days in 1936 and 37. That's it. That's his entire recording career. Five days that change music history forever, beginning with this day in 1936. It's only because of these recordings that the world knows of Robert Johnson, the most influential guitarist of the 20th century. The recordings he makes on this day and the days that follow don't make many waves in the late 1930s, but when they're re-released in 1961, 
They inspire the likes of Bob Dylan, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Keith Richards, and Mick Jagger, who all record covers of Robert Johnson's songs early in their careers as the Rolling Stones, Cream, Led Zeppelin. They incorporate Johnson's vibe and feel into their own unique styles of blues-infused rock and roll. And in turn, they inspire every musician of the next generation to reach back to Robert Johnson, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the White Stripes. The influence just keeps going on and on and on. And that's just rock. That's not to mention the countless blues artists inspired by Robert Johnson. All thanks to the 29 songs he records, starting on this day in 1936 in room 414 at the Gunter Hotel in San Antonio, Texas. The Gunter Hotel is still a hotel. It's a Sheridan now. The Sheridan Gunter Hotel. You can stay in room 414 if you like. You just have to take room 413 too. It's booked as a suite. Maybe you have a song you want to record while you're there. John Mellencamp recorded part of his 2010 album No Better Than This in room 414. Just a couple of musicians around a single microphone. The same way Robert Johnson records his songs. On this day in 1936. There are 38 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. Oh,